everyone. Uh, my name is Amit and I'm from Natadyne. Those of you who have not heard about Natadyne, uh, we are an AI technology company into road safety. Now, we got a call a couple of uh, weeks back to participate in this EV forum. Uh, I was surprised that what is our role there? Uh, during the discussion, we realized that how uh, India is rapidly adopting the EV technology. Uh, the adoption overall is increasing. Infrastructure is getting better. But at the same time, the road accidents are increasing. The fatalities are increasing on the road. And that's when we realized that this is the right time for us to plug in the road safety approach into the EV segment as well. And that's the whole reason why we are here today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what can be done, what we are doing, and uh, some of the use cases uh, that the EV, EV community can, uh, can leverage. But before that, let's take a step back. Uh, we as a country lost about 150,000 lives last year because of road crashes. And I say road crashes, not accidents, because a large number of it could be avoided because those were the result of human error. And what were those errors? A large number was because of overspeeding, because of distracted driving, whether using mobile phone, not focusing on the road, or distracted completely, or not wearing seat belts. Now we as a country have got a good focus on seat belts. But as of now, what we see is it is heavily focused on the passenger cars. How many of you have seen the truck drivers, the lorry drivers, the bus drivers wearing seat belts? Probably not. Just check it out you know, when you go out today evening on the road, and you will see the gap. And we are losing lives. Then it comes to the EV market, rapidly growing, as I said. And uh, I was watching the ET video about this, about this event, which says uh, we will have 4x growth by 2025. And data says uh, that by, by 2030, a majority of commercial vehicles, whether buses or trucks, will be EV. Then isn't it a high time for us to look at that how we can ensure that these vehicles are also safe? And then I, come across, I came across another study from one of the matured markets in Europe, which says the electric cars are more prone to the accidents by almost 50%. 50%, and that's a study by XI Insurance. So pretty reliable, I guess. But what it says is the reason is not the vehicle itself, the high acceleration, the high torque, which the drivers are not used to offer, or the weight of the vehicle, which may work in favor of the passengers sitting inside the vehicle. But for anyone outside the vehicle which you end up ex uh, meeting accident with, it is not safe for them. The noise level. In fact, you know, some of the countries in Europe has made it mandatory that the electric cars have to have a certain decibel of artificial sound so that pedestrians, cyclists, and other vehicles can gauge, OK, there is a vehicle coming. So now with that, what we can do as a community, as a country, there are a number of areas that we're looking at as a country. Uh, awareness about, it, about the rules. Government is heavily focused. And we are seeing the road infrastructure getting better. Uh, government is looking at redu reducing the road accidents by 50%. There's a lot of focus. We, keep on hearing about the new highways getting launched, right? Uh, the infrastructure is better and better. Safer vehicles, you all are working on it. I don't have to talk about that. But there is a last element, driver behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an area what we see is not that focused. If you, if you can't do anything, what do you end up doing? Become a driver. And those drivers may be driving in a very unsafe manner. And that's where we are playing a role uh, as Nitrodyne. Little bit of uh, boasting about ourselves. You know, we are seven years old startup uh, with dual headquarters, San Diego and uh, Bangalore. Now, these are two different markets, two extreme markets when it comes to road transportation. 
And that gives us the extra edge to really leverage those experiences and those knowledge and build a technology that can work in any environment, in any country, in any geography. India itself has got you know, different kind of road infrastructure. You know, some of it may be, may be very mature, but there are certain patches which are still not evolved. So you need a technology that can work in all the, uh, all the markets. Uh, We've got about 18 patents that show that we are heavily focused on the innovation and, and R&D. One thing I would like to highlight here is the 7 billion mile driving data. That shows the strength that we have. The device th that we have, the technology th that we have, has covered 7 billion miles of data. And that is more important than anything else, because now we know what is the behavior of roads, what is the behavior of driver, how, how are uh, vehicles responding in different situations. So all of that knowledge we have. The product that we have is DriverEye. Uh, it's a vision-based driver safety and driver monitoring system. It's an embedded device, which has got NVIDIA TX1 processor. And it, it leverages machine learning, cloud principles, uh, edge computing, and AI algorithm, and becomes a companion of a driver. And when I say companion, it sees everything that a driver sees on the road. But the beauty is, it also sees the driver who cannot see himself. So if I'm drowsy, I'm distracted, I'm using mobile phone, I'm not using, uh, I've not put on the seat belt, the technology can track it. Outward facing, it can read all the road signages, whether speed limit, lane discipline, objects, vehicles on the road, cows, which are very common. All of that can be same, parallelly looked at and analyzed. And in case of violation, an alert is generated. Now that alert can go to the driver and the device itself, or on the mobile phone app, or to the fleet manager who is centrally managing. Now, what all we analyze? I, I just covered a you know, number of factors, uh, all the objects outside, inside. Uh, but two things which we see are very uh, uh, welcoming from the Indian consumers. And when I say consumers, I'm talking about the, the commercial uh, 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 operations, or transport companies, or logistics companies falling distance between two vehicles. We know that it's about an inch in many cases. And that makes it extremely dangerous driving. Another one is uh, distraction. We all know it. It's not easy for drivers, mind it. Uh, we cannot stay away from the phone for 15 minutes. And the driver has to be you know, staying away from phone like eight hours. Maybe a, during the break, he, he checks it. right? So how do we ensure that as a community, that drivers are not distracted because it's not dangerous for themselves, but it, it is also dangerous for others. Now we do not end here. The alerts are a good thing to have, right? But on top of it, you know, we analyze everything, every second of driving, every second of driving, and then provide something called as green zone score. This is like your civil score, which is based on your payment or defaults and whatnot. This is based on, on everything that you do on the road while driving. The companies that we work with, they are leveraging it to coach their drivers, to reward their drivers in, uh, if they are good, if they're good drivers, if they're safe drivers, awarding them. But the use cases are numerous. Uh, we can see that even it can be used for license renewals. I go to RTO, I'm a bad driver, my score is good, I got a thumbs down. I go for insurance premium. I get uh, less premium. I have to pay less premium if I'm a good driver versus not so good driver. Uh, now I want to show you a couple of videos how, how it is working, how it is changing. Uh, we have seen reduction of about 50% in road accidents already. And I have those numbers in the future slides. But there's some videos here for you to see how the device is actually tracking every second of driving. Have a look at this. Gentlemen, he looks tired, sleepy, and there are alerts on top right. You can see distracted, fatigue. So now the alerts are generated. Otherwise, in normal scenario, nothing happens. No cop will catch you for this. 
There's another one where the distance is not being maintained between the vehicles ahead of you. So now the device is real time tracking what is the speed of the vehicles ahead and your own, own speed and then tells you how much time you will take if you continue the, at the same pace to hit into that vehicle. And then alerts are generated real time. Now this is a beautiful case. Uh, we have a tendency to blame the larger vehicle in case of an accident. If a truck accident, it's the truck of the truck. If it's the truck of the truck, it's the truck Happens all the time, but they're not at fault all the time. We know it, you know it. We were talking to a few state transport companies uh, last month in December, and uh, what, what we learned is, you know, they have got, you know, some of the states have got about 15 crore to 20 crore of budget allocated towards payment of compensation to the victims of the accidents. And they know it that their driver is not at fault all the time, but they still have to pay that money. Imagine if you're able to provide a functionality to your customers, if you provide the buses, let's say, to the state transport companies, where they are able to get the details of the event in the, in the form of video and showcase and exonerate the driver, they would, they would love it. Have a look. Uh, this has got four views, uh, inside, inward, outward, and sideways. Look at the one on the top right, which is outward. The driver is driving at a nominal speed of 27 kilometers per hour, and then there's a two-wheeler pops up from nowhere. There is no way the driver could, could uh, uh, assume that there is a vehicle coming and, and could stop. So driver was driving safe. It was the fault of someone else. We have been working with some companies. Uh, Writer is one of our one of our partners, uh, which is a cash carrying company. You might have seen, you know, they they carry cash for a ATM uh, refill. Uh, within six months, this they saw a humongous reduction of accidents, about 60 percent. Huge improvement in their driver behavior. Huge improvement in all the parameters. Just because you know they they leverage technology and they automate a lot of their coaching. Likewise, there is another case from one of the oil gas companies, and, uh, and I can name this company, it's, uh, it's Shell, which, which has mandated to use this technology in all of their, uh, all of their vehicles. They were getting about 12,000 alerts in approximately a month long driving. 12,000 alerts, that means you know, going too close, not maintaining distance, uh, jumping red lights, uh, or, or using mobile phone, 12,000 in 2019, and we are at 2022, it is 800. 12,000 to 800. Remember, the difference of 11,200 you know, could translate into at least 10% of accidents, or whatever number. And that could have been catastrophic, because they're carrying oil and gas. It's, it's flammable. Not just dangerous for the driver or the vehicle ahead, but for anyone else around. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my last slide, uh, where I'm going to talk about what we can do as a community. I've got a request for you all. Uh, make drivers a part of your learning and development programs. We have it for all the teams, but drivers are the ones who are carrying the country, who are connecting the country, and they should be part of your L&D program. They should be awarded for safe driving. They should be coached in case they are not able to drive safe. They need it because they are doing the toughest job that any one of us does uh, from our offices. Leverage technology. There are, there are options, there are opportunities which can automate a lot of stuff. Leverage that. If you want to talk to us, we are at the exhibitor area, do connect with us. But the last and most important is be an advocate of road safety. You guys are the voice of industry. People follow you, not in your company, but also in the country. So please start talking about it, that, that why road safety is critical, and, and how much lives, uh, how much it is costing to us as a country, about 1% of the GDP. Because ladies and gentlemen, there are 400 Indians, there are 400 Indians who leave home in the morning and they don't come back. They need us. We don't want to lose so many lives. Thank you so much.